this is the OGN finals from last night between Aegis and Africa Freaks Blue. I'll preface this VOD review by saying that I'm pretty sure everyone knew, or at least I knew with 100% certainty <laughs> before these finals started that Envy was going to dominate them. I don't think that there was even question as to whether or not Envy was going to dominate. There were a lot of people who made videos and like analysis YouTube things like clips and interviews and stuff and they were saying that like they expected it to be a 3-2 or a 4-3 or like a 4-2 or something but if you looked if you watched the VODs you could tell that Envy was going to win I think without any doubt in your mind it was just a matter of how bad they were going to win I think OGN kind of boned itself with some of the... I mean, I like the idea of picking your opponents in the semis or the quarters. But I guess back to what happened with the patch, it kind of made it kind of questionable, I guess. I mean, the patch, you could argue that the patch screwed the tournament. But you could also argue that the patch made the tournament better. And it definitely goes either way. Um, I've seen Monty post about like a tournament realm sing similar to the way League does it, and I definitely think that there's value in that. And if they want to go that route, I mean, nobody's going to not support it, right? But um, as for this tournament, I don't like the idea of patches going for three months. Um, I'm not saying that this patch is that good. I mean, I don't hate this patch so far. There's a lot of tank play, and I think that we have to do something, like the Blizzard needs to do something about tanks. But in terms of patching during tournaments, I would say if the tournament is this long, it's probably okay, but not during the quarters. Because I feel like what happened was that maybe AFB was better. I mean, AFB was definitely better last patch when they could run Nano Boosted Genji and it would work. But now that Nano Boosted Genji doesn't work, they kind of don't win because they have a lot of, I don't want to say one tricks, but they pretty much have a lot of one tricks on. Africa Freaks. And you could argue that Envious has a lot of one tricks as well. Um, they actually can't run Farah anymore. They can't run Genji anymore. They can't run... I mean, that's pretty much it. But that's a decent amount of heroes. They can't really run Tracer super successfully, I would say. I don't know how good Harry and Taimu are at Tracer. But the way that things worked out, I would have expected Rogue to have beaten Envy if the patch hadn't hit. I think that if the patch, I think that even if it had waited two weeks after the patch, I think Rogue still would have lost. I think Envy's got this patch on like a whole nother um, level. Like I think that this patch was like specifically designed for <laughs> Envious in some ways. But I think Envy will continue to be dominant regardless. As soon, like Taimu will eventually learn how to play Mei and whatever. Ara, Genji, or Harry will, or someone will, maybe even Mickey will. But point being, I feel like AFB was the number five team in the tournament. I think that everyone on the other side of the bracket was better than them. I'm pretty sure that Lunatic High would have beaten them. I'm pretty sure Kumdu and Sia would have beaten them. Rogue would have beaten them, and then Envy would have beaten them. So they're definitely, I would definitely put them at number five in the tournament. So that's kind of my issue with this VOD is that I expected them to lose. Lose. I don't think that AFB is like a top team as far as this tournament goes. I mean, they made it to the finals, but I think that they made it to the finals because of cockiness from Rogue and from Lunatic High. I think if Rogue had just not chosen envious and taken like this team or something they would have had a way better time and we could have had a double western final or even envy versus lunatic high or kung do and Sia, depending on who won because those matches were actually really really close but i didn't think that these i didn't think that this match was going to be close at all i definitely could tell that just by watching the semis and the quarters I would like a levitating also, alright, at least we got that out of the way quickly. I get it. Welcome to Nepal. Those statues are floating and that makes me kind of uncomfortable. 
Does it? I, I would I'd like be, a levitating statue in my house. I'd be a little bit nervous getting too close to those things, you know? I mean, what if the batteries give out? I mean, it seems like a comfortable way to meditate. Do you think they have, like, meditation? Batteries, though? There's no batteries. Absolutely. Not just for the, the statues. I hope there's no batteries. You would expect that this to be, like, some geothermal-powered plant. I mean, so why not levitation? Oh, man, Oasis looks so This good. is the future. Wait to plan that map. Monkeys can talk. I think they use batteries. Blue versus Envious start things off on Sanctum. Maybe they do. And here we go. So also, if people are asking why there's black bars, it's because it's the YouTube that has the black bars. Someone ripped this off Twitch, and I'm just watching a YouTube video because watching Twitch is questionable. So the quality of this VOD might not be as good as normal, but it's also because it's like a shitty YouTube restream that's probably going to get banned from YouTube in a day or two. Pause. All right. All right, guys. As soon as you see this, you kind of just assume that MV is going to win this round easy. Triple support, first of all, is kind of questionable. I mean, it's definitely questionable. It's not even kind of questionable. It's definitely questionable. You're running triple healer. All right. You're running triple healer in like an Ana meta. And literally, if Ana hits like one nuke, these three heroes become kind of worthless. So that's the first problem with this, is that Anna Nuke just shits on triple heals. So running triple heals against a hero that removes heals can definitely not work out for you given the right circumstance. The second reason is you have no range. You have Zarya, Reinhardt, Roadhog. You literally have no range. You're pretty much banking on them clumping up. The only way you're getting kills is with Roadhog hooks and Reinhardt charges. But you can definitely space yourself well enough that you're not going to wind up dying to the hooks. I mean, charges or whatever and all that fun stuff. But the point being that, honestly, if, the, if MBS wanted to, they could switch Mickey to Zarya and I don't think Africa Freaks could get a kill. Um, even nano boosted, they don't really even have good nano boost targets. So this composition to me is very questionable. I don't know why you would do this, especially on King of the Hill. I think that there might be validity to this comp on defense on certain maps, just because you can really, really stall out the point with like trans, nano boost, sound barrier, you, like very, very beefy lineup that's hard to get through, but not on points where you have to force fights and there's a lot of range, especially on Sanctum. Like you have that walkway over here. Where, like the pillars are and then you go up the staircase and then you're like a 76 standing here and you're shooting onto the point like roadhog can't really do anything so i don't like this comp i think you just switch out recry or you switch out dayfly and you go 76 or you go mccree or you go zarya even or they have zarya but reaper you get the picture they don't have any way to get kills other than roadhog hooks but if they win the first fight, it's very good for them because they can hold the point with their tanky ass heroes. But like they're gonna take this upper fight and it like they're running one healer against two, so in theory Rogue should win the initial fight because they have the shield spam advantage from the 76. And yeah, 76 gets a kill on Recry, and now this is just a one fight. Like nothing else to say here. Like, you should realize that if you're running this and you're not running the 76, you actually have no damage for the shield. And you're relying super heavily on the Roadhog to do anything, and I think that that's not super good. Like, there's no way for them really to get onto Harry Hook right now. Like, they're not running D.Va. Harry Hook can just do it every once. Like Harry Hook's already at ninety percent ult. Like he has ult already. This is a really clutch. I mean, I don't know if he needed to do it. I like the whole hog for sure. The nano boost was just to save him from dying, but I'm not sure that they needed to do that. It was a little bit overkill, but. I understand why he did it, like you definitely don't want your hog to die there, but as far as whether or not that was necessary, oh, Alright, I want to point this out too, and I was thinking about this last night when I watched this. 
They hit the hook. The second that they hit the hook, Coco goes for the charge. He doesn't even like wait to see who it was. He knows that the window is so small, and it's like a very small thing, but the mental, like the the thought to just in, immediately charge the second that you see the hook is latched, regardless of who it is, pays off really well for them here because it gets them the kill on the hog. And I'm not even sure if they would have gotten the kill on the hog without the charge. But the point being that like, the play was literally, he was had his shift key ready and he did the charge the second that he could tell that the hook was latched. Like there was no hesitation, there was no thinking, it was literally hook and then charge. He didn't care who it was because he actually couldn't even tell who it was. But it's a big deal. Of their style that we've seen them run so far in Apex. You know, we talked about them needing to make some changes for this match, but not on control. Control was where they were doing the best. So this is the map type that I wanted to see them. Look like Shatter. I mean, Africa Freaks has a lot of damage, but they don't have the best things to combo with Graviton, and they don't really have the best heroes for Nano Boost. So even though they have ult advantage, it's not super big of a deal. There's like they pop trans, they pop nano, they pop. I'm assuming they're gonna pop like they just pop everything. They speed boost. And we got kind of caught there on the stairs for sure. I think the Earth Shatter missed, and Coco's Earth Shatter got blocked, and then they couldn't do anything about it. And then the sheer ult advantage. And you see Africa Freaks like this is kind of where the comp gets powerful is when you already control the point because you can kind of hold here, but. They had to expend like three or four ults to take that fight, and I'm pretty sure time move. Alright, that's a good kill actually. This is a good play from Arhan too. I'm not sure how Dayfly just got a 2k, I think it was an Ana nuke, but... When does that insta charge not work? Um, I mean it depends on the map, right? Like right there it's fine because he's gonna crash into a wall immediately, but you don't want to like do it all the time obviously. Okay, this is a mistake. For sure this is a mistake from AFB. AFB I think... I said at the beginning I didn't like their comp, but their comp is actually very good if you can control the point. Like, if you ever get control of the point, you're in a good spot. Theoretically, because you can force choke fights and then play off the Zenyatta damage, but... Um, they won that fight so convincingly, and they have Sound Barrier and they have Graviton, and they're, like, deciding to play back and scared when the... The easiest play is for them to just stay in here and then graviton them and then just kill everything in the graviton. Um, the fact that Harry's able to just walk out and come here is kind of... I don't actually know why he's allowed to do this. I think that this is awkward. Like, the only way 76 works is if you let him get this much room. Or, like, here. If you let him get out in the open to shoot out in the open, like, that's when 76 is really good. But... They should have never given him that opportunity. They have Graviton, like they have Whole Hog. They can definitely just sit here and then Graviton them. But letting Harry get out this far really puts them in a bad spot. And I actually don't know why they would let him do this. Like you see, now they're kind of flustered. Like Envy just came out and now their composition's great. And the gra they still have Graviton though on Africa Freaks. So you see this, like this is like the best case positioning for Envious, but they didn't have to do anything to get it. They were just given it. And I think Africa Freaks like just played this very very wrong like I don't This is just a straight like I don't know if it's a skill level thing or just a strategy thing But you can't do that like you can't do this and win games Like you have a composition that's based on fighting in small areas and then you let them get spacing So it, it didn't make sense there that whole hog was really good though from Jin at the end. He got a couple of kills with it. But MBS got the cap and then it went to 99, so now it's just another fight. Yeah, Adam's like televising that he has Shatter, like he's waiting for it. I don't know if this is the play. I, I like that window though. But again, he's playing shield into no shield and he just gets charged. So like that position was really bad, I think. And then they lose because of that. Like Recry can't let that happen there. Because then this happens. That was like a mistake from the Reinhardt for sure. Um, they're not playing their composition correctly. Like they're not playing to the strengths of the composition at all. You want to try to force fights and narrow chokes, not like give them room to get through. The second Harry gets open space is like the second that they lose. They're not running a 76 to counter, so slow. 
unfortunate. Absolutely huge, Noah. I just don't agree with Africa's blue, Blues composition at all. Yeah, I mean, Monty is harping on the composition. The composition is definitely bad, but my point being that if they had just played it smarter, they could have definitely won with their comp. So you have to just not let Harry get that upper area, and then that's how you win. You could arguably just keep your entire team on that right ledge and just deny the 76, and you'd have a lot easier time. But, um... Yeah. Uh, to let the enemy team get those crucial hooks yeah. and we kept seeing them get picked off so really weird decision by Africa so AFB is going for the last patch um, they're running May Zarya it's not bad I mean it's always good on this map I think I think this is one of the better maps for May just because the wall can block the point pretty easily by itself and most fights happen up here so the wall is a big deal um, the second that they get walled off though here it's the game is a lot harder for sure Aimu never got through, so now Recry gets a kill on chips, and that should just be the end of the fight. Once the Mercy's dead, you just kind of lose. Or not the Mercy, the Anna. Once the healer's dead. Good kill from Coco, though. That kill on Arhan's pretty big. Because um, it gives you a little bit more time to get back now. Like, Arhan just spawned, and Envious is already 6 up. So if they go fast, they can definitely get in before the Genji's back and in a good position, but... So far, no, sticking with what worked for them last round. They have such a scary comp, though, AFB. So this wall is kind of bad. Like, whatever just happened, they don't show it, and I don't actually know how that happened. I don't know how the Lucio... Like, I don't understand how Internet Hulk kills Dayfly, or how the Reinhardts kill each other. Because they have a Mei and a Zarya. Um... Again, this is just a sheer outskill. Like, this push right here is just an outskill. There's no, like, super incredible play that Envious makes. I think it's just AFB not respecting Envious or, like, not playing it correctly. Like, how does a Lucio kill an Ana? And how does... And why did he wall there? Like, three people are now chasing Harry Hook by him. Like, this is, a, this is one soldier, and there's three people staring at him. Meanwhile, like... Somehow your Anna just died and your Reinhardt's dead. Like, maybe if you guys were helping your Anna and your Reinhardt... I don't know. This is just awkward. Really awkward fight. But again, like, the Anna died. It's just GG at that point. Pretty much whichever team loses the Anna. Really Arhan. Harry's aim is just so smooth, man. So now they just got the point for free. They didn't actually use any ults. They didn't do anything impressive. They just somehow got two kills on the Anna and the Reinhardt, like, immediately, even though they should have just been on the high ground waiting. I'm not really sure what happened. Let me show. Sorry, fam. Do you see how Envy is just, like, holding upper? Sound barrier comes out for arguably way too early. But this is how you win fights if you're AFB. You just nano boost your Genji. It took them too long to do this, I think. I think Coco just hit an Earth Shatter on like two people or something and killed Adam. Envious won that because of the Earth Shatter, I'm pretty sure. That was a big play from Coco. But again, like their composition only wins if they hit Gravitons. Which they haven't even gotten a single one yet. And if they nano boost Genji and it works. But if you... You know, boost a Genji on the side of AFB and you still lose a fight, like, the game is very, very difficult. I'm just flustered here. He doesn't have any... His, like, I mean, this is his only play, right? That's him alive. They're really not playing the point. Both teams are just kind of playing the frags, which I think is smart. This Graviton's kind of... Meh. That both supports, though. I don't agree with this Dragon Blade from Arhan either. I think that this is like, I don't know if it's Tilt or what, but they already had the point. Like, AFB controlled the point already. So burning the nano, like burning this without the nano boost is actually pretty bad. But n neither team has ult though right now. But they just walk in because Arhan was dead. Like if Arhan wasn't dead there, they wouldn't be able to just walk in for free. But um, good bop from Hulk there. There's the Blizzard. 
in the fight off the blizzard. Arhan gets killed by Chips again. Chips gets another kill on the Lucio and hits a nuke on like three people. Chips just won this fight for them actually. That was a 4k from Chips that fight. It was literally a 4k. Like, he actually just killed four people. But you see, like, you wish Arhan had Nano Boost, had Dragon Blade right now. I mean, I'm not saying that they would win if he had Dragon Blade, but the fact that he burned it on nothing and then fed and gave him the point, and then now Envious just kind of owns the point and they don't have anyone to Nano Boost. Like, you can Nano Boost to Zarya, I guess? But is that really that good? No. Good wall. Great wall from Recry. Completely zones out Harry Hook throughout the Nano Boost and the Ultimate. Mickey throws in the Diva ult. But again, like, there's no real win condition. Jin just died with Graviton. That was only a second Graviton of the entire game that he got, and it was, like, right at the end. Like, I'm not saying Zarya's a bad hero, but you have to make it work. And you see, like, now they're staggering their ults again. It's over, but you wish that you could have Nano Boosted a Dragon Blade there, and you would have been so much better. I don't know. They just didn't look like they're not playing cleanly at all. I don't like literally at all. They're literally just like, okay, guys, we're just gonna use ults. Like Arhan burning that ult is a really big deal, because now you just don't have a combo. Um, I didn't hate their first point strat as much as I thought I would. Like upon looking at it again, I thought that the triple support could have worked. It definitely could have worked. Like it has merit on that point specifically, but you have to play it more aggressive for sure. And then the second point. You definitely have to nano boost your dragon blades. It's like nano boost a dragon blade and then graviton a blizzard, and that's how you win. But they didn't really do that ever. The only fights that they won were off the back of like graviton, I think. But if you only get one graviton, that's the only fight you win. That's not really that good. Map one.